Hello, I'm Kristen. Welcome to my channel. I talk a lot about my weird school, Minerva, on here. If you don't know what that is, watch some other videos first. Because today I'm going to be talking about something kind of specific, which is Minerva's civic projects. So first of all, what is a civic project? Basically, it is a project that Minerva students do within a single semester, so in a single city, where they complete something or do something for a civic partner. So what is a civic partner? A civic partner can be either an individual or an organization that is a professional in the city that Minerva has set up to work with us. So theoretically, these partners are supposed to span all of the majors and all of the career interests that we have expressed, but realistically, it's really constrained by what's available in the city. Some industries are a lot more prevalent in certain cities and certain countries than others. And second, what the personal networks of the Minerva staff in that city are, because almost all of the partners come from some sort of network maybe a couple degrees removed, but from the more direct network of the staff for that actual city. Additionally, civic projects have looked different every semester and every year, both because Minerva is growing and changing them and because that particular city and the culture in that city lends itself to a certain way of working with these people or these organizations. So I'm going to do a quick overview of what the civic partners have generally looked like and how they've generally been happening in every semester in my experience as a class of 2020 student, but I'm also going to then go in a little deeper on the projects that I've actually participated in and sort of explain why at this point I have sworn off civic projects because beginning in my junior year, I decided I was not going to partake in any more civic projects. So if you wanna know why I made that decision, stay tuned. <laughs> First, let's get into an overview of projects for every city. Kind of gonna go through a bit fast on this round and then we'll go deeper next round. So in San Francisco, we could only do civic projects in the second semester and almost all of them were tied to our final projects. So I believe I've talked about my final project experience before. Check out that video about the first year if you wanna know how that works. But basically we all had to do a project using all of the stuff we had learned in the first year and Minerva wanted us to do that project with a partner so that we could be showing that partner how great all the stuff that we were learning at Minerva was basically um, and it was also supposed to help us get feedback that was more specific to like our career interests or get feedback from professionals and not just our professors. So next in Seoul we had a ton of of civic partners and we met them not you couldn't meet all of them but we met them at a event called Civitas which happened in the first week in Seoul and then there was some attempt for the student experience team so Minerva staff to really arrange the project introductions and sort of the launches of all these projects and there was a lot of like filling out forms saying which projects you wanted to be in and then like RSVPing to those like project launches and then eventually it was just sort of the students working on the project interacting directly with the partner and the end of the semester featured an event called Symposium where some of the projects that were more successful presented on what they had been working on. This is generally what it looked like every semester since then, so I'm gonna just touch on some of the things that were a little bit different in each subsequent semester. So Hyderabad was extremely similar, tons of partners, we met a bunch of them at Civitas. The partners actually got to sort of pitch their projects to us at Civitas, which I think did actually happen in Seoul, so never mind. But um, SXP did try to get a little bit more hands-on with setting expectations for these projects because of feedback that a lot of people were just like, ah, oh, what's going on in Seoul? So in Hyderabad, there was a little bit more structure attempted in terms of like, who's the student lead on this project? Here's what their responsibility should lead. Here's some other like positions we recommend you have for your project. And then Berlin had less of an emphasis on civic projects, at least 
it felt that way to me maybe just because I wasn't looking for them. But our Civitas was a lot more about like getting to know people and interacting with civic partners even if we weren't going to do a project with them. And then our symposium, so that end of semester event, I don't think anyone actually presented on a civic project. It became a lot more about like individuals and what they were doing to pursue their own like career interests. And then in Berlin, we went back to a bit more structure, which I think just reflects that it does depend on the staff in the city and it's not just like Minerva changing in a obvious direction due to like feedback. And there were a couple of big projects with like really big name organizations that did happen in Buenos Aires, so you probably have been able to spot that on Minerva's social media. But at this point, a lot of people regarded it more as like an internship and they would talk about it as like doing an internship and not necessarily use the wording like civic projects, which I think also reflects that this idea is very strange and a lot of the people Minerva was trying to work with weren't really sure what to do with it. So at this point, they had stopped maybe like pushing for it to be like wild and crazy and new and different like everything Minerva does and kind of made it okay for these projects to be more like a little mini internship, basically. And even though that's the last city that I've actually been to, I will say that London, we can't really do civic projects because on our short-term stay visa, there's like this weird clause that we can't even like volunteer so we're basically like working as volunteers when we do this so I don't think we can actually do civic projects in London uh and then god knows what'll happen in Taipei because it's the very last semester and I feel like everyone is either going to be freaking out about capstone or and probably and freaking out about getting a job so who knows if they'll even try with us that semester? So I've seen most of the civic project action that's gonna happen. <clears throat> so now I want to get into the reasons why after the end of sophomore year, I decided to no longer do civic projects. Initially, I was going to go into detail about how all my different projects went, but it gets very repetitive. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sort of like list off the things that I felt went wrong with it and that's not to say that like civic projects are inherently bad things but it's more like civic projects never worked for me so that's more of what I'm going for here I think it's totally possible that you watch this and you're like eh, I don't think I would have those problems I think I'd totally love trying to do that and that's awesome but it's just like I also want to like reassure you if you are considering Minerva or you're starting Minerva or whatever, whenever you're watching this, that you don't have to do civic projects to be like a good Minervan. Cause that was a lot of the pressure that I felt, at least in San Francisco and Seoul in particular. So the very first project I participated in actually started out as a co-curricular, which is basically like a one-off learning experience but it sort of dragged out into a bigger project after that initial co-curricular. So because of that, I do consider it a project. And the issue really was that the expectations and what we were actually going to be doing beginning with that co-curricular were super unclear. And it turned out to be a lot less interesting than one might have expected. It was a lot of just like literally punching numbers and doing busy work for some company. And then at the end of that, we got to do some like fun little data analysis and data visualizations, but that was like 10% of the work that we did. So there was kind of joking that we were basically just like slaves or that we were free labor, which is an attitude that a lot of people have developed towards civic projects is that we shouldn't be doing that for free, that people should be paid for their work. And if you're gonna be putting that much time into something, you should be getting paid for it, especially because not all projects have as much potential to really teach you something as others. So when you come out of it and you feel like you didn't learn a lot, it can feel like a big waste of time because you were doing it for free. So with my uh, one civic project that I actually connected to an assignment, which is that first year final project, the issue I had was that the expectations for the assignment and the expectations that the civic partner had ended up being very different and in 
some ways very conflicting and that made it really difficult because we, the group working on the project, wanted to get decent grades on it. But Minerva <laughs> wanted us to give the partner what they wanted. And it became just extremely frustrating and ultimately the partner was like not thrilled with what we gave them. I don't think he thought that it was like the worst thing in the world, but it definitely wasn't as good by the measures that he was using as it could have been. That sort of like led me away from trying to cross over civic projects with academics too much. Which is really unfortunate because one of the best ways to do civic projects is if you can use it for an assignment or really integrate it into your academics because then the whole problem of, oh, I'm working for free kind of isn't as big a deal because you're doing that work to get a good grade and you're doing that work as a part of your schoolwork. So if you can make it work with an assignment or academics, I think that's like the most justifiable reason to do a civic project, which is an approach that a lot of people have taken that I know of. Um, but it's just never worked out that great for me. I think I did actually use my sole civic project for my LBA, my location-based assignment for a class, but don't tell anyone, but it was probably a decent bit of BS. Uh, <laughs> and I don't think that that like, the assignment was, like, on top of what I was doing for the project. It just happened that I could, like, use that experience and that knowledge I had already gained from working on it to do the assignment, but it was still, like, separate. So it still felt like I was doing all of this extra work for the partner for free, and I didn't really know what I was getting out of it. The other big problem I have is that, and this is the main reason I swore them off, is that the time commitment for these projects always turned out to be too much. They wanted us to deliver things that would take so long to produce. And when I'm a full-time student and I'm working part-time to pay for my meals, it's really difficult to say you're gonna take on this unpaid thing for like up to eight to 10 hours a week. Like those hours just don't exist. And this is the problem that I had in both Seoul and Hyderabad with the projects that I was working on. In Seoul, it also included an issue with the scale of the projects. So when the project got picked, when the project got pitched to us in Seoul, the one that I was working on, it had a massive scope. They wanted us to get so much done in those like three months, basically. And that, we managed to communicate and talk them down from this like three stage thing into maybe let's just try to get stage one done. Um, and even that, we didn't like totally get done done. We just got it to a point where we could pass it off to them, which was good. I felt okay with how that one turned out, even though it definitely could have been better because I did put in a ton of time to it and I felt like what we delivered was of decent quality, it met their expectations, and we communicated about why we were delivering less than they had initially thought we would be able to. So that one started to deter me from projects and initially in India I was not going to do one, but then there was one that lined up a lot more with my career interests. So the one I did in Seoul was kind of like, let's see what happens and just do something that sounds kind of interesting. And then I was like, this is not what I want to be doing in my life. So then I went to India and I was like, I'm only gonna do a project if it's like perfect, exactly what I want to be doing. I think it's gonna give me the best possible experience that I could like throw on my resume and help me get jobs in the sector that I want to go into. <sighs> So then the big problem was, and this was a bit of the part of the problem in Seoul, but bigger with what happened in India, was that the team was very small and none of us were committed enough to really make it happen. So it was again like the scope ended up being bigger, the time needed ended up being bigger than we thought it would be. And in this case, and I am ashamed to say it, we totally just fell through. <laughs> and 
I, at that point, was like, I can't do this anymore because I'm not going to be the one person trying to put in 10 hours a week to get something done during finals week, trying to put in, like, basically a full week of work for somebody else while I'm doing my finals because we've all been procrastinating on this project because none of us really know what we're doing enough. <laughs> and so this also had to do with, like, the partner's expectations and ours being a bit different. And also just that the team didn't have enough time to commit to get it done. Like, we all wanted to be able to get it done, but, like, when it came down to the realistic <laughs> picture of things, there was just no way it was going to happen with the amount of time that we had. Yeah, I decided... I just wasn't even going to go there anymore because I was so embarrassed that we fell through and upset at how badly we'd been working together that I just decided that even though I liked pushing myself, even though I liked trying new things, this wasn't the way I wanted to be doing it. So I started putting more energy into personal projects, putting up more videos on this channel, working on some other stuff where I didn't have that responsibility to an external party because I really hate disappointing people. I really hate quitting. So once I realized that the amount of strain that these projects put on me wasn't really worth it and that even after putting in all of that effort, I could still have to quit or basically like sacrifice all my sleep and mental health, I just decided to no longer try to do that thing. And I think that's totally fine because I'm doing other things that are better for me. I'm still developing in terms of career, professional interests, developing the technical skills that I'm going to want to have going into my field. I'm just doing it in a way that is healthier for me, more comfortable for me, and... With how difficult Minerva is, I think it's totally okay to do that. <laughs> I think it's totally okay to say, I need to have less stress in my life because there's already so much. So I'm going to get rid of this stress that I've taken on that's really optional. And that's basically what it boils down to. If you have any questions at all, if you want to hear about, I don't know, I could maybe tell you more details of what actually happened during some of these projects. I might be willing to get into that, but I'm also like, especially the ones that didn't turn out great or that I'm going to like say bad things about other people. I don't really want to do that on the internet. I'm not out here for that. But if you have questions, leave them down below and I will try to get you an answer. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!